What's the trend, Matt? The trend is that runners from the previous year's bearing Bingham, six from 10, big profits from that. And they finished 06101P in the bearing Bingham. So very different results over hurdles. A Gaelic Warrior, who was second, and American Mike, who was seventh, are both still in this. And it's very hard to know what's going to turn up here. Ginny's Destiny 4.1, Grey Dawning 5.7, Fasar Vega 5.8, Iroko 7.8, 8.2, Gaelic Warrior. God, it's easy hard to know what's going to rock up. American Mike uh, 23, Fatsafel 21, and so on and so forth. Uh, I, I did stick one in here, which is Fasar Vega. I, I think he's made for this trip. I, I would love it if he ran in this race for all that they seem to be obsessed with him over two miles. But if he rocked up in this, I would be absolutely all over him. At, at the price. I think he's perfect for a middle distance. And I think Ruby Walsh agrees as well. But uh, it just depends what Willie Mullins does. Don. Yeah, I, I think the disparity between Ginny's Destiny and Grey Dawning in, is, is a wee bit greater than it should be. I know Grey Dawning also has the option of the brand advisory, but like he, he probably would have beaten Ginny's Destiny at Cheltenham in December had he not made a really bad mistake at the second last fence. Like he did, as Charlie said earlier, did really well to get, get back at Ginny's Destiny like he didn't get as close as he did. And then he went to Warwick last time for the Hampton chase. And, okay, the race was run to suit with Broadway Boy and Apple's away, Apple away taking each other on, but he travelled really well through the race and he, he quickened up smartly. I know that was over three miles and he does stay that trip, but a strongly run two and a half miles should suit him well. He's got form at the track as well. And yeah, I, look, I, I think he's an improving horse. He's he's, he's rated higher than Ginny's Destiny. Ginny's Destiny is a shorter price than him. He's, he's, there's not much between them, and they're running the last day in December. But I, I think Ray Downing is a he's a coming horse, and he comes into the race on a high as well. Dees, what do you want to add? Um, nothing. Just that uh, it's amazing that the the Brits might have the the top two in the market in a in a novice race at Chiltern. It's a good news story for you this year. Um. I, 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 Grey Donning, I think, is is a brilliant horse. Um, when it worked last time, was one of the best novice uh, performances I've seen all season, and I think he has a right chance in this. And I'd agree with you on Fasal Vega. He should have been stepped up a long time ago, and um, he will, he will, he will go close. And this is a uh, Grey Donning with my best bet. Okay, com- competing, completing the Grey Donning shout, Matt Toomes. Yeah, I'd agree with what the lad said. Um, I think. Dan's been talking about the ground being the determinant. I think it's the the opposition. I think he's going to see Factor Far, Stay Away, Faye and Monty Star in the Broadway and then see Ginny's Destiny as favourite for this and he won't be able to resist it. For those who want to throw a few coins, an unlikely runner at a three-figure price, I'd have found a 50, I think it's about 130, favourite for this if he ran. Now, he's a much less likely runner because Gordon has said it's the Arkel, generally a man who sticks to his plan. But to my eye, he looked to get done for toe by a little tomp in the Irish Arkle. And dropping back just over a furlong would look to be against him. He jumps right, so you'd think the turners on the less turning new course would suit him better than having to jump at Arkle pace on the old course. Gordon did leave him in the turners, unlike Firefox, who he scratched in the bearing bingham. So whilst I haven't heard anything to say he's changed his mind, I wonder if he has got half an eye on this race in, in case it falls apart. So a back grey dawning, just have a few coins on Founder 50 and hope one of them shows up. Yeah, and, and somebody wants to back at 140.0. So there you are. It's probably you, Matt, on, on the exchange. Obviously, different to, to non runner, no bet sports bet prices. But if you. If... Oh, I just unplugged my microphone. Well worth heading to the Matchbook Exchange. Um, uh, who else have we got? A couple of big prices going up off the back of Charlie's shout, Ginny's Destiny. Yeah, I, I like Ginny's destiny in this. Obviously, won the the same novice handicap chase as Stage Star did en route to this last year, and I hate that. I agree with the lads that there's every chance Grey Dawning might have beat him at Cheltenham on his penultimate start, but you know I think he came forward again to win that novice handicap off one four seven, and I just he's just a rock solid horse. He, he he's a prominent racer, which again I don't think is any bad thing in this contest. He's a very sound jumper, and. <laughs> You know, if Grey Dawning pitches up here, it's probably, you know, there, there's very little between them. But just over this trip with with, the, with this horse continuing to progress, I, I would marginally favour him over Grey Dawning. And, and again, um, Matt's comment about Dan maybe avoiding Factor Farley is probably justified. So maybe it won't come down to ground. Um, maybe it'll be a fact that he's, moved, he's he's shifting away from Factor Far. But either way, I'd still be with Ginny's Destiny, Ginny's Destiny over this trip. Couple of big prices, first of all, from Steve. 
Yeah, if Gio Vinco decides to go this way, I think would have a, a decent chance. Everyone got excited about stay away Faye earlier in the season. That's gone a bit cool. I don't quite know why people are cool on stay away Faye for any race. But anyway, Gio Vinco put it up to stay away Faye at Sandown. It was just outstayed. Seemed to have the measure of that one for much of the race until the run in at Sandown. And since then, pulled up behind Ile France at Kempton. Well, Ile France would be about tens on for this race if he was coming over from France. And last time, warmed up at Newcastle by beating one other runner. I think this is a classy horse. I think he's got the gears for two and a half. I think that'd be ideal, a, a decent run at two and a half. So take a chance, Giovinco. Okay, someone has, someone has taken 140 about uh, found a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Moving <laughs> markets. Love it. <laughs> Lovely, yeah. I mean, seeing as we know our producer is currently on the site, it's blatantly him. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's obvious. Uh, who's the other big one? Dan, Jello. Yeah, I think you mentioned it, Tom. This race, again, like the Brown Vizier, has a lot of potential to cut up. So that kind of leads me to looking at horses at a bigger price. And I think Jello, for all that he hasn't got a flashy profile, he hasn't actually done anything wrong over fences, if you really look at it. He won his first three, including beating Master Chewy on his chase debut, who was already race fit. See, Massachusetts has gone on the front that form pretty impressively. Won a week grade two at Ascot, uh, beating Kandu Kid. I'm not going to say that's form good enough to win a grade one at Cheltenham, because it isn't. But it was impressed with the way he did it. Went from the front on that occasion, jumped really well. He's a really nimble and accurate jumper, which I like to see. And then, obviously, went to Lingfield, where he was just taken out of the first. And that fall was not really a fall. We had nothing he could have done about that. And then went to the Silly Isles in a race that, when was previewed, the idea was that four of the five were all front runners, Jello included. You could see a real pace collapse. But nothing wanted to get near Nickelback, who obviously went on to make all and look, did so really impressively. But Jello was ridden with extreme restraint on that occasion, really out the back, snuck into the race, didn't have any chance of really closing on Nickelback, who obviously just got a brilliant ride on quick ground and was never coming back to them. But Hermes Alain obviously tragically fell at the second last, but I think Jello was getting the better of him. And I think all being, things being considered, I think if Hermes Alain was in Jello shoes, I think he'd be a fair shade shorter. I think realistically, that, that run can be great upgraded based on the way it panned out tactically and also the fact that the yard weren't in great form. And he won't be popular because he was rated 128 at the start of his chase career and didn't have top class hurdles form. But the exact same was said of Lompresse. And obviously we know what he did. And while I'm not saying he's up to that level, I think in a race that could cut up a big prize, he's worth having a little bit of money on right now. Moving on to the Ryanair chase. We'll have a look at the top of the betting whilst Matt tells you the trend. In the grade one renewals, the front two in the SP market, 12 from 35, 45% profit. From an antipose point of view, especially this year, and there's still plenty of uncertainty about what's going to run. We want a horse that will shorten it into the front of the SP market. 4.4 Bambridge, Envoy Allen, 5.8 State Star, 6.4. This is the Matchbook Preview Team Steam Race. I won't come to everyone on Bambridge. Steve and Dan, I'm going to let you fight it out between you, if that's okay. Steve, why Bambridge? No, just the best horse who's got a good record in Britain. And I think as he's got older, as a lot of horses do, their feet grow and they cope with soft ground better. So I think he's bombproof. Dan? Yeah, I mean, you just had to be really impressed by the way he, he won the last day at Ascot. He had every reason not to do, be as impressive that occasion. Obviously, first run of the season and the others are race fit. But the manner in which he did it, I thought, was really impressive. Clearly a horse who's still far from unexposed, or far from exposed, rather. Obviously, he races over two miles a lot of the time as well, so he doesn't lack for speed. But clearly, this trip is more preferable for him, given he won a Martin Pike previously. I think he's the clear favourite on this and would be the most likely winner. Maybe you wouldn't want the ground to be extreme, I think, good to soft soft in place would be the worst you'd want to see it for him and if it was softer he would probably drift and they may not run him but if he does run there and the conditions are in his favor i think he'll take a lot of beating here and you have been the first brit to say the last day congratulations landed um, we've got <laughs> excellent landed i'm blending uh, hopefully, in <laughs> hopefully someone else can say from the back of the last shortly and then we'll uh, then we'll have completed a lot of them i'm going to remind you about the competition which is a 25 pound free Cheltenham bet competition and that is for every 50 likes and comments so like the video comment what you like it doesn't have to be live you can be doing this in a week's time whatever you like and 25 pound free bet will come one of your ways that's for every 50 likes and comments so please do that uh we're currently on 42 likes so we need a few more but that will happen as we progress so keep them coming in likes and comments that's what we need 
Uh, okay, we've done Banbridge. Uh, one at a bigger price, isn't there? Who's our Who's our bigger price merchant in this race? It's or me. Am I, or am I, am I think... Yes, yes, you are. Yes, sorry, DC. Go on, fugitive. <clears throat> this horse will be staying on from the back of the last. Um, I like fugitive. I thought I think that this year he has he was he was a very solid handicapper for the last three years. Um, but this year he's probably taken his farm up a up a step. Um, he won at the the seven meeting over over course and distance off ground. They came from miles back to pick up her daughter. And again, the last time they probably his, it was his first go his first go at a at a grey one in the Clarence House over a distance that was um too short from he again he was just staying on. He has one run style. He'll be sitting out the back of your screen coming up the hill and he will fly home. Um, his twenty two point zero, I. Before he's a bit of a bigger, bigger price, but I would have this a small little win bet on him, and I'd probably bet him um three places if it's available and four places if it's available. I think we we, we might get the eight or more in this, um hopefully. So I I I I'd have him as a a nice place, but anyway to hit the, the top share for this, and maybe he'll even win. Gus has pointed out that Charlie already had her the last day. I'm very sorry, Charlie. I stole that from from under your nose. It's a disgrace. And so Banbridge is the team steam in the Ryanair. The Stayers hurdle we come to next. Uh, we've got a few here with Irish Point. But first of all, Matt, what's the underbet trend? Only one of the last four winners had won any race that season. It's always dangerous using longer term trends in a changing race. And I think the Stayers hurdle is changing. It used to be a very thin division, much more competitive now. Also, they used to go steadily, tended to fan out the straight loads still in contention. There were a few hard luck stories, so the same horses used to win a lot. But if Flooring Porter or Dashiell Drasher turn up, we may get a strong gallop again. And five of the last seven winners have gone off double-figure prices, including Liz Nagar Oscar, 51.0. Last year, Cider Burley, 34.0. It's no longer a race for bankers who line up with a string of ones next to their name. Don't be afraid to back one at a price. That's the extraordinary stat. So three of the last four were, were had been defeated in every start of that season. And that's why you're with 21.0 shot home by the Lee. Yeah, um, I've taken a bit of a punt on him. He ran a good race, beaten less than four lengths in fifth last year, despite making a desperate error at the sixth, losing his hind end. Um, that looked to cost him more than he was beaten by. He's won, uh, run twice this season. Good five and a quarter lengths, third to Bob Ollinger and the Liz Mullen over an inadequate 2-4. Comes out the best horse in the race. He's carrying a nine-pound penalty. Form's worked out pretty well. I thought he'd take plenty of beating when trying to win the three-mile grade one at Leopard Sound at Christmas again. Hated being in front. Spat the dummy. I mean, he is a quirky sort. He's a chancy proposition. He might just not fancy it for whatever reason on the day. But there should be pace for him to be ridden behind here. As I said, if Florian Porter shows up, may get the real test of stamina he craves. So it's a race that could still develop on the run up to the meeting. But from an anti point of view, I'll have a small go at home by the Lee. All right. Every now and again, you see Michal DC typing in the document and you think, where, what and how? What has he written? But sometimes we have to tweet out a picture of him with a crown on his head because he's the king of the jumps because he's found one at a big old price. And there it is, Buddy One, ninety point zero. DC, take it away. No, this is a. I must need, need, need a lot of faith with this kind of pick. But um, look, this horse, he he, he has festival farm. He finished uh, he finished hard in the American Pipe last year. Ran a cracker, and again ran very well at entry. Um, in a, at a higher grade. Kept going during the summer, um, and he he actually won at the track at the November meeting. He won he won a, a handicap there, beating the newest one. He was running off eleven seven. He was well very well punted on the day. He had a go then at the top level behind Tihuku and uh, in the Hatton's Grace hurdle again. That just he did. I, I think the, he he was beating twenty seven lengths now. Um, probably just wasn't that on the day. He he he'd already had a fairly long season. He'd been on the go since July at that stage. And completely bombed out at Leperstown at Christmas. Um, the trainer said, "Look, he was he was a bit injured, and he's been freshened up now at this stage." He, um, again, he's a massive, massive price. He's ninety point zero. This is the only race that he can possibly run in. Um, he, like, uh, if he if he turns up on the day, he's going to be shorter than that. And again, look, he has uh, he has course form. He can, he'll stay the trip. Um, it's a massive price. I again, this is this is going to be a three or four place bet. 
you might even get the five places in the match book exchange for this. Um, I just think it is worth a swing at something, and this is Matt set uh, at, at a big price. I think the, there's good horses at the top of the market, but they're all a bit short. They're all kind of the same kind of ability, and I'd rather be on one at uh, 90.0 than at uh, 4.5, 5.5. And I, uh, I, I have Monkfish back in this as well, but it looks like he's going for the Gold Cup. Well, that's what um, I was going to come to. So, and Brennan has asked about Monkfish. Is that is that everyone's understanding? Okay. Yeah, it's just been it's been mentioned um, a few times in I don't know like I think Willie Willie mentioned it I think uh, Joel Chambers mentioned it as well and uh, David Case said it at a previous night the night and if I was him I, I probably would run him in the Gold Cup he probably has a he's 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 a Gold Cup kind of horse um, but I I'd love to see him see him line up in this I think he'd have a, he'd have a right go off it but uh, like the, uh, the vibes are he's 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 going for a going for the big one and he's drifted a lot for this. Okay, Irish point then in a few parts. Charlie, first of all. Yeah, I mean, Dees is saying that they're all sort of much and much as ability wise. I just think this horse maybe has a chance to be a bit better than the rest of them. He, he was a great one winning Novice Hurdler over, over two and a half at Aintree. Started the season off winning readily in a, in a grade three over, over two mile one and then and then handled the step up to, to nearly three miles. Seriously well at, at Leopardstown, thrashing a steering for Lange. Um, you know, I think a good gallop in this race will help him. He'll be able to be slotted in, ridden patiently. And he just is the one of, of all of these that, that maybe has the chance to elevate him above himself, above his contemporaries. And, you, you know, Tiupu in the same ownership is the one up there, the market. He's kind of had his chance in this race before. And yeah, I think if Irish Point turns up, I'm, I'm surprised he, he isn't going to be a stronger favourite than what he is right now. Dan? Yeah, it's interesting the vibes around him just don't seem that strong. Like it all seems about Tia Hooper, but to me, I, I'd say this is the horse with most potential. And if you go back through all of his form, it's all really classy. I and mean, even beat Ile Francais on a grade one AQPS race as a three year old, was he second to Marine National in a Royal Bond, won the Mersey at Aintree over two and a half miles and hit the line strongly on that occasion. Obviously, the Christmas hurdle was a slowly run race, but it was on heavy ground. So that it's kind of mixed messages about how guaranteed he is to be a proper three miler, but. Looks a really uncomplicated horse, has a lot of upside, and I'd rather back him in the race, given it's his first go, rather than Tia Hoopu, who last year probably had a golden opportunity to win what was a weak race. This isn't exactly a vintage renewal either, but I'd rather back the horse who's having his first go at it. And one more for uh, Irish Point Steve. Yeah, I can't believe that Tiupu's in front of him in the betting, to be honest, because this horse is much better potential. Tiupu couldn't beat... He finished third past the post behind two pensioners last year. And that's the kind of the thing with the stay, is her, stay in division at the moment. It's just full of horses that have had their day, like Paisley Park, Dashiell Drasher, and inside to Burley. They might have been great horses in, in their time, but it's just not. And it's ripe for something like Irish Point. How anyone could even consider running this horse in any other race, I, I just don't know. I think he's the best by a mile, and I think he's the best bet of the week if he runs. Okay, your second best bet of the week. And <laughs> who else have we got? Oh, Don! Don! This having everyone crowd to you, Poo. Don! Like, he got to within three parts of the length of winning the race last year when he won the Galmoy hurdle. The Okay, it was probably about six or seven weeks before the race, but he had a tough race there. And he didn't have a great run through the the final part of the race the last last year. He still was still only beaten two parts of a length by his stable companion, Sir de Berle, who's back again for more. He's a twelve year old this year. Um when Tiapa won the Hatton's Grace hurdle back in early December, Gordon Elliott said directly, nearly directly afterwards that they were going to keep him fresh and bring him to Cheltenham for the stairs hurdle. He's run eight times off a break of fifty days or more. He's won all eight times off that break. He's a, he's obviously best fresh. It's a it's a fair punt to take him from the Hans Grace hurdle all the way to Cheltenham, but obviously that's his only goal this year is to win a Sayers hurdle. And okay, I'm sure he'll go on to Winchester or or maybe even Liverpool afterwards. But this is his, obviously his, his objective. Um, he's only seven now. He's got form with the track, and I know he's probably a better horse on softer ground. And it did it was soft last year, and that's a little bit of a concern. But he, he, he's probably a stronger horse this year as a seven year old than he was last year as a six year old. And yeah, I, I think he's the one they ought to be. Uh, 
that's to you, Po. Uh, have we done? I think we're all done, aren't we? Yes. Right. So a couple of big shouts. Home by the lead. Buddy won. Irish point in a few places in to you, Any other bets then on the day? Uh, I'm sticking up this Indigo Breeze. If he runs, hasn't been seen for over a year. Um, Eugenio Sullivan has picked a horse up. Maxine will ride, uh, obviously. And I, I think he'll, I don't know his British mark, but I mean, the real whacker form from a year and a half ago is very strong, but I would assume he'll get under 145. Just thought he was interesting, keeping an eye on it's his only entry. Indigo Breeze currently 60.0. Don, back at you. Yeah, just Madara again, the, the plate, if he goes here, he, he, he's got the option of going for the plate or going for the grand annual, but he does stay two and a half miles. He could improve for going up to two and a half miles and running here in the new course versus the old course of the grand annual. So, um, yeah, Madara for the plate, if he goes. Michal DC. I have, yeah, I have two up there on Saive for Ogdalene in the, the Port Thames. He almost landed a massive gamble a couple of years ago in the the or the, the brown advisory um i think matt touched him in a in, in one of the, the previews there on us long wall that like uh god must have run in this and he's he's missed a few races to to take up his appointment in the port temps um right good horse i know he'll have a big weight but they'll um just like a claim ran him and anyway, he's a his top class hurdler. i think he'd beat um vanillier the year that uh, Vanilla won the, the Albert Bartlett, he beat him at Christmas, so I think he has a, he's a good chance in that. And the other one is one I put up last year, um, I actually put him up as my charity bet in a Chelton Preview night at, at uh, Torty Trees, and that absolutely killed by the boss. But uh, it was Rapper in the, the Kim Muir. Um, I thought he had a right chance last year, and I think he burst a blood vessel in the race. He he, he pulled up. No, it's not, uh, not great to be back on horses at a bust blood vessels but i think he's back Um, he has run way he, he ran well at cheltenham in the in the international meet in december he was eight and a half lengths behind broadway boy and he ran a right race last time he got uh, behind three on the true five Um, he's beaten a length and henry daly is in serious form Um, he's 31 percent the last two weeks he's had a 21 20 to 1 winner win by eight links, and he's a 16 to 1 winner win by eight links. And the last time he was in form like this was Christmas 2022, when again he had something like eight runners out of eight winners out of 14 runners. Um, he's running hot, he's coming to into farm right around Cheltenham. Rapper has been backed as well. He's coming to I think he's about uh, 16.0 now. I think he'll have a he'll have a right cut off to come here. Steve, one for you in the mayor's novice. Yeah, Golden Ace, who's trained by Jeremy Scott, Dash and Drash's train. He always seems to have a good horse. And this is definitely a good horse. He's won twice at Taunton, beat the boys first time up and then cruised home last time. He also finished second to Dice at Enos in a bumper, but he's, she's been improved since then. She is She's top class, I'm sure. Of it. And a couple for you, Dan. Yeah, a couple of the handicaps are in the plate. Safaro, who we kind of mentioned in passing, obviously has form that ties in with Pantajan and Calixios, who a lot of us fancy for the Arkle. Obviously, pulled well clear of Mr. Policeman last time out when chasing home uh, Calixios on that occasion. One of the gambles of the festival last year in the Coral Cup. I think he went off 7.5 after being double figures for pretty much all the way up. Forgive him that run because he was on the worst part of the track and never had the chance. But he won a Michael Purcell, obviously over two and a half miles. He's a half-brother to King's Odyssey, who actually finished fourth in a plate. And the half-brother Sandy Mount Rose as well, who won over three miles. I think stepping up in trip is sure to suit and obviously have a good record in the race, as does Gordon Elliott. So I hope they go for this race and not the grand annual. And then in the potent, Gabby's Cross, who's currently rated £13 lower over hurdles than he is over fences, but he's never been a great jumper. So I don't think there's any reason to suggest he won't be as effective over hurdles. Had a couple of runs over the smaller obstacles earlier this season. Both worked out well. He was second to the aforementioned Buddy One and when coming from off the pace. Obviously, Buddy One then went on to win at Cheltenham. Lots of subsequent winners in behind on that occasion as well. Qualified at Punchestown, went second to Jody Ted, who'd previously just won over fences easily of a 10 bound higher mark, and then went off favourite for the Paddy Power. Again, didn't exactly get the run of the race on that occasion. Really good effort in second. That qualifiers produced three of the last six winners of the Potemps final. Been freshened up with this in mind, seemingly, and has run extremely well off a break in the past. He won a goalway handicap of 137 and was only beaten four lengths in a paddy power of 143 after the breaks of three months or more. So I think if he is aimed at this, I think he'd have a good chance. Obviously, we find out his mark tomorrow, but he'll be off a lower weight than he is over fences. And I think his hurdles form would this season would suggest he's capable of defying whatever mark he's given. 
All right, best Thursday lays. There's only one, and it's you, Matt, who is, is she, I mean, she's a price, but you want to take her on all ends up. Yeah, uh, both in the win and the place market here, Dice Art, Enos. I think the front two in the market are really good. She's avoided the penalty and much has been made of that. But five of the eight winners so far have carried the full five pound penalty. Usually a big field, they go quickly. Two of her three runs have been in really weak races. I'll be worried about whether she's quite ready for this. So, yeah, a lay, particularly in the place market. And on to the best bets then for the day. I'll just go in order. It's in front of me. My best bet is Brighter Days Ahead in the Mayor's Novice. Think she's an absolute rocket. Matt, your best bet? Bambridge in the Ryanair. Don. Secretary in the Stairs Hurdle. Against Steve. Irish Point. And Charlie. Bambridge in the Ryanair. Uh, Dan, one of the handicaps. Had to be. Yeah, I'll go with Safaro in the plate. Hopefully he goes here, not the Grand Annual. Um, biggest price, best bet, DC. Fjordjit Heath, win place in the Ryanair. 